All right, everybody, welcome to Troubadour Podcast. Today, I've got Stuart Margolis. But uh, am I saying your name correctly, your last name? Margolis. Uh, uh, no, you actually said it right Margolis. the first time. Margolis. But uh, professionally, I go by Stuart Wade. My full legal name is Stuart Wade Margolis, and that's just way too long. Um, so I go by Stuart Wade uh, in, in my movie career. Okay. Like but, um, yeah, yeah. Wade Hatton. That's a, an old Western um, guy's name. I, may, I don't know why that makes okay. me think of Wade Hatton. I love Westerns. I so. guess you do. Yeah, I, I'm not even familiar with him, but yeah. The Hattons. I feel like the, I, I'm drawing a blank on exactly what movie it was. It might have been um, Dodge City with um, huh. Errol Flynn. But anyway, oh, I think okay. he might have played Wade Hatton. But I, I, if I'm wrong, someone correct me by, by telling me who it is, or we'll look it up on IMDb later. But um, Stuart Wade is yes. a although your name says Margolis on there so I apologize I should have should Oh no that more It's I mean yeah I'm both I'm I'm a dual personality All right and that's going to be a good theme in our show today uh, because you are a director and a producer you've directed uh, a movie that just came out recently correct Yes yeah, a couple weeks ago yeah a couple weeks ago called Say Yes so there is a poster here and we're going to watch a trailer in a few minutes. And it's a very interesting theme and subject matter, very controversial. So today we're going to be talking about things like sexuality, our culture, and how we deal with sexuality. I think we'll probably talk a little bit about repression, which if you follow the show, I've talked quite a bit about, actually. I think repression is a very harmful thing in general, and it's something we need to, as a culture, kind of better confront if we're going to as individuals within the culture, grow and, and be better. So, you know, let's, uh, why don't we get started? Or actually, before I show the trailer clip, Stuart, do you want to give a quick little snippet about your background in directing and producing and, and what you've done? Okay, um, sure. I um, I actually, you, you left out, I think of my main identity as a writer. Uh, okay. My background is in writing. I have a um, very, very uh, useful degree uh, in playwriting both the undergraduate and the graduate degree. You probably didn't even know they gave degrees in playwriting, but they do. Um, so I started out in theater in writing plays, and uh, my last year of grad school, I kind of discovered uh, that nobody makes a living in the theater in America. So I, I started, uh, I'd always been interested in film, and I started uh, writing movies. And uh, uh, initially, the first, like, 15 years of my career, I was just a, a struggling screenwriter, and I, I did sell one script and had it made overseas. But... Um, I, oh, really? That's that, awesome. Yeah, it was very cool. They flew me to, to uh, Munich, Germany. I spent a couple weeks there rewriting. It was so much fun. That's but awesome. at the end of the day, after promising me they wouldn't change a word, other I mean, they were translating it into German, mm -hmm. uh, but they added, the director added this whole dream sequence that had nothing to do with my movie and that was very bizarre. And it turned out, like, I found out years later, it was um, the whole purpose of it was commenting on some current political scandal that was happening. Mm -hmm. had nothing to do with my movie. It was just an excuse to put this in. Propaganda. Exactly. And it, it's just frustrating. And as a writer, you don't have any control. So I, I went back to school and studied film directing and um, started directing my own things. And I've been at it now for since 2000. So that's that's been a while. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm in the, so I don't know if like we, you and I met at um, an institute, a nonprofit. I don't know if you want to mention it or not. Um, <laughs> I don't know if it matters, but we, we met at an institute. We worked together in an office. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I had gone through film school. So right. I had a film degree. You and that I, background. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, I've written scripts and stuff and I'm in the process of writing my first script that I'm really like, ain't like writing it for the purpose of sale, selling. For the first ah, time, like in the past, okay. you know, it's just kind of to write because I wanted to yes. write. Exactly. But now I'm trying to think about the market a little bit more and, and you know, it may not be the best way sometimes, but I'm, I'm going to try anyway. Yeah. So anyway, um, at some point, maybe, you know, after we talk about your film a little bit, you could tell me more about how you sold your first script, because I sure. know there are writers in um, that that watch. And there's quite a few actually in the, in the community of Troubadour okay, um, sure. it's for, yeah. for writers and creators. So yeah. anyway. You know, so thank you for for the background. That's interesting. I I know the the big one, of course, though that you didn't mention is you did work with Lance Bass. I noticed. I did, Lance, <laughs> and a couple I other guess. cool big hitters. The, I um, um, the guy from yeah, the office. Two um, 
big music. You know, Lance, of course, is not really known as an actor. He's known as a, as a musician. And I also, on a previous film, had worked with Debbie Gibson, also mostly known. Uh, she's probably a little before your time, but she was huge back in the 80s um, and is incredibly talented, both as a singer-songwriter and as an actress. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've worked with a few interesting people yeah. over the years. I mean, that's one of the cool things. I mean, you live in Southern California, so you're like in that world, and that's that's awesome. I'm in Northern California. I need to maybe make my way down. Well, if if you want to, uh, you know, be really immersed in the entertainment industry, obviously this is the center of it. So, but you know, you can also do a lot from from remote and uh, just coming into town when necessary. With my bear rug, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's watch this clip and or this trailer, I should say. This is the trailer. Yeah, trailer. Yeah. Um, our sound won't be off, so we'll have to be quiet for okay. a few, for just a minute or two. I don't know if you'll be able to see it actually. Oh, they, okay. they will. So okay. um, I'll, I'll just have to let you know when it's done. Okay. Good. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's go ahead and watch this. This is say yes. You know what would make me really happy? If you and Caden got together. Very funny. He seems like a good guy. He's just a bit conventional. You think I'm attracted to him? You're not. You are beautiful. You ever think about posing nude? Ow! Oh! I'm straight. And in love with you. Human sexuality is so much more complex than man or woman, gay or straight, either or. I can't talk to you when you're naked. Promise me you're going to make your decisions out of love, not fear. But it is safest if I try to deny this, then watch it unfold, then to watch it unfold. But I know enough I'm longing for your touch And I think, oh Just a little bit of breath and sound Just a little bit of reaching out We, we are, oh, okay, we're back. Sorry, I had my... my uh... Muted. So I, I imagine you know what that trailer was because you made it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we have, you know, I, I said that this show might be about sexuality because we're going to talk about the movie. And, you know, I, the movie is about a, um, a trio. It's a tryst movie about a man, a straight man who falls in love w with a woman, a very wild, rambunctious kind of woman. And uh, they get, but they get married, they live happily, and then she gets cancer. And then, you know, as she's going, passing, she wants him, you know, he starts to fall in love or have weird mixed feelings, I should say, about her brother who moves in with them to help her in her convalescence. So it's an interesting struggle. And it's, you know, a, a, between these three characters, it, it's mostly those three characters. I think the only other characters are the mother and father. And then, um, like, there's a bevy of people at the beginning Friends, right, like, and there's the including doctor, you. But... I spotted you. Yes, yeah, I, like, I, so I, I, I'm an extra. <laughs> so, <laughs> a little um, Alfred Hitchcock. A little Alfred Hitchcock. Do you do that on all your movies? I try to. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So cool. So it's yeah. not so much an artistic thing as uh, you know. Then I don't have to worry about. That's one less extra to worry about. Yeah. Frankly. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally get that. Um, so. So anyway, um, so that's the movie. So it's it's dealing with sexuality. You heard in the trailer. There was, um, you know, she talks about the fluidity of mm -hmm. sexuality, which I imagine is one of the more uh, controversial things in there that Definitely. I thought we could talk about. Before before we go in there, I, I thought, you know, you're the, the director. Did you produce it all or was there another person? I was co-producer and, okay. uh, and writer-director, yeah. Okay. So it's your job to sell, right, to some degree, to the people. So yes. I'm going to – I didn't warn you about this, but I, I probably should have. I apologize. But I'm going <laughs> to let you try this. I, you know, I'm a straight guy. I, I watched it for the interview, but think about if I didn't watch it for the interview, what would be your sales pitch to me about to this? a straight guy. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. Well, that's that's actually a, a, a tough one, and it's something I've thought about. Um, I think it's definitely not going to be something that appeals to probably the average straight guy, because I think even today, I think most straight guys just would rather not think about gay issues. <laughs> I mean, they may, you know, they may have gay friends, they may have gay family, but it's not something they really want to like think about or deal with in any great amount. Hmm. But for people that are a little more broad-minded or, you know, maybe younger people especially um, that, you know, are not necessarily struggling with issues of sexuality, but just a little more open to uh, thinking about issues of sexuality and uh, to the possibility that things aren't quite as, you know, uh, black, white, off, on uh, with regard to that. And um, that's, you know, that's a, kind of a new thing, this whole idea of sexual fluidity. Mm -hmm. um, and it's threatening not just to, to straight people, but I mean, I, I got a lot of pushback from from gay people. You know, it's like, well, I would well, have thought it would have been more the, the gay community. Yeah, I would push back because one of the one of the implications is that homosexuality is not a choice then. Or, or that it can be a choice. If if it's fluid. It's not necessarily a choice then. Like, or I'm sorry, it is a choice. Is what I yeah. mean. It, yeah. it, it seems like there's more like, sorry, I said that wrong. That's why yeah. I was confused. Yeah, it's more yeah. like, and, and the, the arc or the, the narrative for a while has been, it's not a choice. Exactly. And, and so That's... now you're bringing up something that maybe it is a choice. Yeah, and which is I think an interesting. That's what's very controversial yeah. is that for years the 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 movement, such as it is the gay movement, has you know sold the narrative that we're born this way. It's you know it's not a choice. Um, I think it's a lot more complex than that. I think mm -hmm. that uh, there are probably hereditary genetic factors that influence your sexuality, but the fact that identical twins, you know, one can be gay and one can be straight. It's clearly not all genetic. Hmm. It's just not. I mean, yeah, because I didn't think about we that. have those twin studies, and it's very clear. Um, but what I what I think is interesting is, you know, the whole notion that it has to we have to you know claim that it's it's immutable and inborn is you know that homosexuality is bad, and so you know. But if you're if you don't have a choice, you know, it's like well, okay. Yeah. It's like, you know, being crippled is bad, but you can't blame the cripples. You well, it's know, like it's, outside of the normal realm of morality is what right. I think the gay community was pushing for a long time. Right. Yeah. But they were yeah. doing it in contrast to a very particular generic morality. And you and I come exactly. from a different philosophical background. Exactly. So I could kind of sense that that was part of what you were you were playing with. And I think you, you know, probably do that in your, your work a little bit more as you work with the a different concept of free will and morality than most people are used to. Yeah, definitely. Oh, what book was he reading when she met him? What was that? Um, I think that was a book, uh, a novel that a friend of mine wrote. Um, it's called Pacifica. Oh, okay. And it's, um, it, it, it's not well known at all, but it's, um, it, it's kind of uh, a dystopian or not a, sorry, it's a kind of utopian uh these people kind of go off and, and form their own society on an island, and it's uh, it's quite interesting. But anyway, okay. that, no, I thought I it might be Atlas Shrugged. That's why, because well, it was big I, like I, that, and I was like, that would be interesting. Sort of my friends, um, he, he wrote it. It's, I think it's his version of Atlas Shrugged. Okay, it, okay, fair enough. Um, he was he's a big fan, and um, but I I didn't want to use Atlas Shrugged because I don't think I have permission. It's mm -hmm. you know you get the rights, and I I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't, uh, oh, Leonard doesn't have him anymore. It's um, oh, it's the it's, producer now. It's well, some movie producer. Yeah, that's the movie rights, but the rights to oh, you. Yeah. I mean, maybe I could have just name checked it in the. But you know, you get into also if you show the cover, then you you know the whoever publishes it, you have to get the rights. And yeah, yeah, it's complicated. It, it just is a whole thing, and I didn't want to deal. Sorry, with I didn't mean that. to get off track. I just yeah, that's like, okay. we were talking about the philosophy, and I was like. Right. I remember watching that. And I was looking for the cover. I was like, "Oh, but you, you cut it right before he shows the cover." I, I yeah. get that. Um, okay, so back to you know, so there, there, it's a controversial idea, the yeah. fluidity and choice, and there's this different morality, and you play with very unique concepts within within the broader culture. Yeah, you know, even that's going on today, and within the gay community. 
in the, the narrative. Well, I'll tell you kind of why I, well, a couple reasons why I think that there's a validity to this idea that, that, you know, of, of sexual fluidity. Um, you know, if you, if you're familiar at all with the Kinsey studies that were done back, I, I think in the 1950s, and that have been repeated and, and the data. That sounds familiar. What, what exactly was that? Okay. So Kinsey uh, was one of the, you know, sort of first people to really study sexuality. And mm-hmm. what he found is that he created what's called the Kinsey scale. And basically, you know, most people, heterosexuals are, I think it's zero and homosexuals is six. And he found that most people are not the two extremes. Most people are mm-hmm. somewhere in the middle. And, in terms of behavior, behavior, you know, most people don't ever act on, you know, impulses that are not predominant. Um, and very few people, bisexual, true bisexuals are right in the middle, but most people are, are, you know, sort of not quite on the edges, but not quite in the middle. And in our society, if you're, you know, 95% heterosexual, there's a lot of reasons to just be heterosexual. Hmm. Um, and, you know, increasingly as, you know, sort of the, the gay movement came along, um, it, things reversed. It used to be if you had even, you know, 10% heterosexual, you would try and push yourself to not be gay. You'd try to go to that 10%. Hmm. But with the gay movement, it changed and there was a lot of pressure to declare yourself, to be part of the movement and to say, you know, uh, to stand up and not be wishy-washy and say, you know, I'm gay and that's that. Um, but the thing is that that doesn't really describe the large numbers of people. So what Kinsey found is that somewhere between like five and 10% of people are homosexual, you know, what we would call homosexual. They, you know, have gay sex, you know, as a routine thing or part, you know, that's part of their lives. But somewhere between 30 and 40% of, of men in particular have had some gay experience either in adolescence or early adulthood or have ongoing Well, does it, thoughts, is it the fans. same thing if it's adolescence, though? Because um, it's like such a development thing. That it is that a development it seems thing. That, like, but you found, I mean, uh, my parents, when I was really young, caught me in the closet with a boy. You know, I, but I was yeah. like, re, like, like four or something. I don't know. Right. Like, right. I, I feel like most, that that's well, pretty normal. No, yeah, no, for four, that's, yeah, that's totally not. Like, no, that, yeah. you know, we didn't, we, no, were, we, we didn't know like, what we were doing, obviously. No, know. not at four, but at, you know, at 18, 19, 20. Oh, okay. That's different. You know, you know what you're a, doing. That's a man, really, at that that's point. That's a young man. And, you know, you can okay. argue. And, it's and, college and, experimentation. Right. And, you know, we, we all are aware and fairly accepting of, Women, you know, kind of experiment in college. The reality is, according to these studies, men do the same thing. They just don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, So and I think there's a small, you know, most people, I think, by their mid 20s, you know, the the brain research is, you know, by about 25, your brain is fully formed. You're kind of pretty set in in all kinds of neocortex is all done. basically. Exactly. You're done. And I think for most people, that includes their sexuality. Mm-hmm. But I think that for the, for people that are in that middle range in the Kinsey scale, um, sometimes it takes a, you know, sort of shock to the system to change things up a little bit. And I think like in my movie, it, it's only because he's going through this trauma with his wife that he finds these feelings for and a man, these deep emotions, these deep open. emotions yeah. that, that with another man that he never would have imagined. Why? And for him, oh, it's, that's, you know, there, it's very, it gets very complicated. There's all sorts of studies about this, but there's, you know, people that are exclusively attracted sexually to one sex or the other, but then there's people that are attracted emotionally, romantically, you know, it, it, they don't always overlap entirely. Um, oh, that's so interesting. Some, so yeah, I mean, like a straight guy would be emotionally connected to other men, but be sexually attracted to women. Yeah, so there's a split. That, there's a split. Hmm. There definitely. How that so happen. how does? And I don't know if I, I'm going to say I don't know if I buy that right now. I'd be curious. I don't think it's common, but I think it does happen. Um, but what is common is uh, 
And again, you know, you could a lot, a lot of times people just argue, okay, well, they're closet cases. But there, there's a lot of men out there who are, you know, married to women and well, that you know, say that they yeah. love their lives, but love their wives, and, but have sex on the side with men. And a lot of the times what they report is that, you know, they, they're not romantically interested in men. They don't find men romantically interesting. They just find them oh, sexually see. interesting. So it's the but reverse. Romance, they want, they want a woman. So mm-hmm. it, it, it gets complicated. And I think we, we've been, told that it's a lot simpler than it is. I think, you know, for some, and I think the other thing is that for some people it really is that simple, but I don't think for everybody. No, I think- yeah, I definitely, I agree. And that's what the, the interesting thing for, for anybody in this movie is the experience of this one individual. And it, it was, by the way, the acting was incredible. The actress oh, did a good. great job. Thank you. And, um, the casting of the straight man looks like he looks like Don Draper. And Doesn't he? That I know. is perfect really for this yeah. role. So the straight guy is Don Draper who goes through this whole, you know, uh, although he's not quite like drawn or written as like the super hyper masculine guy. He's a little, you know, the girl approaches him. He's right. a little bit effeminate in certain ways, I think. Um, you know, so if we, ha- you know, if we have some time in a few minutes, if you could stick around, I'd love to talk about, masculinity and, and, and oh, yeah, femininity. Absolutely. But, um, but on the sexuality thing. So one, I didn't want to say I, um, you know, the, the emotion physical split is a little confusing to me, to be honest, but, um, you know, like I get the idea that you can, cause again, this is internal and this is why it's really hard to have studies about something like this, it is. right? Because yeah. the person may not know their own emotions themselves. So like being able to analyze your own emotional responses is difficult and, oh. you know, for even with a professional, it's difficult. And to do it yourself is really difficult. So, you know, I just find it a little hard to believe. Like, I, I definitely believe 100% that there are guys who are married to women who have strong emotional connections, maybe even sexual connections, but they also have, you know, that seems like just a bisexual person who got married and is trying to fit in. I, but I the, think so. Okay. But I think, but there is definitely... A dichotomy, and I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a healthy dichotomy, but I think it definitely does exist among some of these men anyway, um, between the sort of romantic love and the sexual. Well, it seems like a, them, it's hard these, enough, hard enough to find a romantic love, let alone to split it between the sexes. Oh, like, I agree. Like that I seems agree. way more difficult. I remember like there's, um, Leonard Peikoff who, um, you know, so everybody probably, everyone knows, I, you know, with my Ayn Rand connection, I don't know if, you know, you're open about, or you talk about it much, but I, I, um, Leonard Peikoff was Ayn Rand's heir and there was a podcast that somebody wrote in once. And I remember like really thinking about this, it was such a tragedy, tragedy, I thought. And, and he said the same, you know, he talked about it in the same way, actually. And the, the person wrote in and said that I'm only attracted to heterosexual men. And it's yeah. in their heterosexuality that I'm actually attracted. Yeah. And, you know, today in the transgender movement, it seems like it's it's a case of a person who's who was uh, maybe trapped in a woman or a man body or however they want to, you know, right. you know, talk about, it, you know, I'm not an expert in that or anything. But it was just that that idea of like being emotionally attracted to something that you don't want or, or excuse me, that you can't have in a certain right. way. Uh, right, and it's, absolutely. which is something that, you know, for your movie is relatable to everybody. Although it is a little bit more concrete to this, you know, specific relationship between homosexuality and heterosexuality. It's more honed yeah. in on that, I think. Yeah. But there is something, you know, everybody can feel in terms of unrequited love. Oh, definitely. Which is, yeah. you know, like just wanting something that you can't have, like falling in love with another man's wife. And you like the man's, you like the man, especially like right. if you respect, which I, I've, I've experienced on some level. I really, really fell for a girl and I really liked her husband too. Like not sexually, but I mean, I, as a person, yeah, I liked him I, as a I guy and it was, that was like really annoying to me, <laughs> you yeah. know, to like, and, and we were, you know, close in, in our lives. So it was like kind of annoying. Yeah. So yeah, that kind of thing is, is relatable, I think. And cause that's, what's yeah. going on in here. Um, you know, the only difference is that the, the wife is a free spirit, which um, she would have to be. Otherwise, she would inculcate um, guilt into right. him and he wouldn't do it. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think so she had to be in your script. Yeah, uh-huh. no, she uh, she had to be the kind of character that she is or he wouldn't have been able to kind of discover that part of himself or or feel free. You know, you talked about repression. You know, my take on the character is that he's probably, you know, one of those 90, 10 people that, you know, he's 90 percent heterosexual. And mm-hmm. in our society, he would always have just repressed the that gay part of himself because it's just so much easier not to deal with. And it's only in this sort of extraordinary circumstance that he's that he's able to, you know, kind of open up enough to to let that 10 percent in. Well, I. I, I'm a big like reader of the ancient Greeks, mm-hmm. and you know I, I'm I'm sure you're familiar that they had a much more open idea about sexuality, and part of it oh, was definitely because yeah. they revered the human body, and especially you know they were sexist, but especially yeah, yeah. the male body. Yeah, like they were very much, um, you know, they, they just revered it. You know, they they built their gods around it, their statues, everything was built around their love of the male form and the strength of it, its maneuverability, you know, just everything about it. And that led to a more openness about sexuality. I think a comfort in themselves. I mean, there was wrestling and you would, you know, wrestle naked and oil yourselves up. And that was a normal, you know, a normal activity. But I, I think they had a much healthier relationship with sexuality than we do. Oh, yeah. I, we, we've been like, repressed with 2000 years of Christian thinking about, you know, the mind body split that yeah. has made us these contorted freaks sexually to some degree. And it's, yeah. it's kind of tragic. And it's one of the things that I do think movies like this need to get out more. And we need more uh, touch and more art that does touch on sensuality, sexuality. And it's, you know, it's not like you're going to, I think some heterosexual men might think like they're going to be gay or something if they do. And yeah, I, mean, well, I, think, well, that's, I think that's a weird thought to have if that, if someone still has that. Yeah. Um, it's, well, you know. you know, there's, it's, it's changing very rapidly. Yes, but, it is. You know, uh, and I, when I talk to young people, um, it's incredible to me how different it is than, than when I was a kid. Um, but still, even now, um, you know, there, there is a stigma attached to being gay and there is this idea that, you know, it, it's sort of akin to the old, uh, in the South, you know, one drop of black blood and you're, you're black, you know, that, mm-hmm. that and it's sort of the same, you know, it's like one, one gay experience, you know, you touch another man's penis once and that's it, you're gay. Yeah. And it, it, you know, <clears throat> I think eventually if we keep moving this direction, there'll be a lot less of this idea that the sexuality is so fixed. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, you know, you'll have your, everyone will you know, still have preferences. You may, you know, be mostly heterosexual or whatever, but you, you know, if you happen to find yourself attracted to someone of the same sex and that's, you know, I think it more and more, I, I see with young people that, that, that happens that, you know, more and more, uh, they're open to experimentation. And even now some actors will admit they're like, you know, Oh yeah, I, I fooled around with the, you know, my roommate in college and it wasn't really for me. And they'll, you know, go on. Um, and that's how it should be. It's like, you know, if you, if you aren't coming from the religious perspective or the, you know, the idea that sex is for procreation, if you, if you really believe that, you know, sex is an expression of your, yourself and your, your sensuality and, um, and a, a route to, you know, connecting with another person, then, it, you know, a lot of the taboos start to fall away. Well, I think you hit on it right there. I think that that's the big one is that it's, you know, just for procreation. And I think that even people who don't consciously or, or, you know, um, philosophically agree with that, like explicitly, they are, we we are, we are all affected by that. And it's in your story very well with the parents and their role you know, yeah. in the story. And I don't want to give away everything, but, right. you know, um, but there, there is like that kind of role going on in this, this, um, this world that you created. And I think it's true for sure in our own world that we, you know, even the way I, I've brought this issue up before, but like, you know, I, we watch game of Thrones and, um, or, you know, now game of Thrones makes it a little bit more, um, intri- or okay, but it wasn't too long ago when, you know, when a, a boob goes on TV people freak out. Oh yeah. A nip slip. But then if you're blowing people's heads off, it's That's, okay. 
Yeah. Right. And it's just like that's and and when I I bring that example up all the time, and most people are like, "Okay, what's wrong with that?" That's how ingrained it is. They can't see how that's fucking weird. <laughs> like yeah. that's not. Why is it okay to cut someone's head off? Right. Bl- and like realistic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like and like like blood part. gushing out, and that's okay. Or even exaggerate it, like in Kill Bill. But oh, like yeah. one nipple, and everyone flips their shit. And it's yeah. like, wait a second. Why is that? Like. You know, that type of our, our relationship with sexuality is just so weird and it, people yeah. cannot see it right now. Or people are not, seeing it like more young people, like you said, are starting to yeah. see it. And but it's, um, it, like I said, it's 2000 years of this kind of suppression, repression of, of human sexuality. And uh, mm. so you're not going to be able to reverse it overnight. But I think we're heading in the right direction in that area. Yeah. And I have to be honest, because I don't want to sound like I'm some, you know, I don't know, a open-minded person. It's very <laughs> different. Like I'm not, you know, like I do have my, my faults and, and sometimes it's, or I don't even know if it's a fault. It's just a, a, an honest thing is I can't watch homosexual interactions. I just, it's very difficult for me. Oh, this is my yeah. honest reaction. I don't, it's very yeah, difficult. Yeah. It's yeah. Like emotions I'm fine with, but once it gets into the sexual like really hit heavy hitting with sexuality and they're like making out and doing stuff. It's very, it's very difficult. And I, I don't know if yeah. that's, you know, I grew up in, you know, I was born in 85 and I, you know, played sports and there was all the, the sports talk about sexuality. At yeah. When we were young. I don't know if that's part of it or what it is, but that's just my, even on like game of Thrones, like, you know, the, the, that there's like the sounds when he goes down on his knees and that, like, it's very, difficult for me sometimes to like yeah makes I me uncomfortable and i don't yeah, get uncomfortable you're easily alone. you're not alone i mean i think um you know like anything i think you know over time you'll become you know used to it i mean i the first time i saw two men kiss on screen i think was in making love which i probably you're too young to remember that oh, but it was it was a breakthrough film uh on you know the gay storyline back in like 1980 or 81 and um you know, I remember, you know, even as a gay person being like, you know, wow, that's just so bizarre to, to, to see on screen. It just, it felt yeah. kind of weird. So, um, and I, you know, I certainly know you're not alone. I mean, a lot of straight men and, and women, I think have that reaction. Yeah. And, and I think, I mean, part of what I, I'm, I want to do with, with you and other people with this show is have these, these difficult and honest conversations, because like you're saying, part of the idea is that we're, we're growing as an individual, we're growing as a, a culture and we need to, um, you know, we're, we're talking about like sexuality and, and how it impacts us. Art is a big yeah. part of that. Right. Definitely. And, and that's, that's what you created. You created art. Now, so one of the big questions is, did you create this to tell this particular story or, you know, or is there, you know, what was your reasoning behind it? Was it to push the envelope or did you have another reason? Um, the impetus for the story was kind of twofold. Um, I actually read a Reddit article that I, th- I just thought was fascinating, and it, it, it was about it was from it, it was written by a man who uh, had a straight man who had uh, become seriously ill, like life threatening illness, and his best friend had moved in to take care of him. Best friend also straight. And in the process of this, they they had fallen in love and, and were still in a relationship. Um, and it was it was fascinating. And I thought that's a story that I've not seen told on the on film. And I didn't didn't want to tell their exact story because I don't know them or, or anything. And mm-hmm. but I came up with it. Well, the other thing that was happening at a time is a, a, an acquaintance friend of mine um, came, got cancer and ultimately mm-hmm. passed away. Um, and so that con- having read this story and having gone through this death um, kind of combined to create this storyline in my mind. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I did also w- want to consciously kind of push the envelope a little bit because uh, I, I think it needs to be pushed. I think I think, um, you know, we still are very much constrained by what society expects of us. Mm-hmm. A lot of us. And even even when we consciously know that we shouldn't be, you know, it, there's just so much that we grew up with and that, you know, yeah. it's just hard to break through that. 
Um, but I think you're right that art is a way that allows people to think about things a little differently and to see things they wouldn't normally see mm -hmm. and see things in a way they wouldn't normally see. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to, uh, to create a, a work of art that would, that would do that for people. I was interested. I'm curious if you'd be interested in talking about lines and so, like specific lines in the movie. No, uh, no. well, we could talk about lines in the movie for sure. If you, <laughs> if you have one, if you like. But I, by lines, I mean, so one of the things that I, I, you know, in, in the little that I've been following, like the, the transgender discussion, masculinity, femininity, sexuality right. is this idea of at some, you know, like for instance, we're told now, or the narrative is becoming more strongly, especially depending on where, where you're listening. If you're listening more to the left and everything, the, the, the narrative seems to be that you know, like men, you know, like toxic masculinity and, and, you know, get in touch with your feminine side more, which, you know, I'm not against actually. I mean, I'm, I'm a talker. I, I you know, I, 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 I think about people more than things. Like there's things that are, had generically been more feminine that I definitely take on, even though I'm like a decent sized guy. Like it, it does, you know, like I, I still have those characteristics or whatever. You know, I, I'm not that great with working on, you know, my motorcycle or on, or on anything. I can't work on stuff. Like, I gotta, I don't know what to do. So, you know, there, there's certain things that, you know, these roles are starting to be fluid a little bit more. Yeah. And not just the sexuality, but the roles. So, yeah. but my thought though, is there ha like, how do you develop lines? Like, where's the line? Like, you can't be, for instance, so in touch with your emotions or however you want to say it, that you're just a weeping willow, right? All the time. Like, right. you know, like, and, and you can't, you know, like a lot of, um, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff about, um, what's it called? Uh, I was going to say like, ask, there's a word for it, like, uh, asking for permission. When, you know, oh if, yeah. Um, consent. Consent. Yeah. And there's yeah. a lot with that, which, which I get, of course, especially with me too and everything that's happening, we need to be, we have to have good conversations about it, but there's also like, it's it uh, you like it's the anybody who's ever had sex everything. knows yeah. that you can't do that. Like you won't have sex if you actually say, "Can I do this? Can I do this?" Like right. I've when I was younger, I'll just say this: like like when I was younger and I did that, women didn't have sex with me, and they told me later that's why you were fucking too needy, asking for permission all the time. So it's right. like, and you know, so my point is that there has to be lines that we have to develop. Either as, you know, in the culture, the lines used to be very clear cut. For right. better or for worse, but we knew these are the types of things you could do. There was a, a dark side to that, right? Like there's everyone talks about the dark side of the fifties where mm -hmm. you have this picture perfect lines of this, you know, leave it to beaver, dad came dad worked and but then there was like this madman underpinning of right. depression and, and, and people beating their wives and not showing it and all that stuff, which is whoa. You Obviously, can't, you know, yeah, that, so that's the, the bad side of having stark lines. And yeah. those weren't even that stark. Like, I, you know, I think in the Middle East, it's more stark in certain yeah. certain states. So my, my question is, though, you do need lines on some level. You get, you got to stop. You got to, you know, you, you got to be a man at some point. You got to buck up and be a man. And that's not well, a bad word. And, and so how do you develop those in this fluid world? I, you know, I, I certainly don't have all the answers. Um, but um, oh, Stuart, you do. I, well, got I, all the answers, I, brother. I mean, <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I mean, I think that focusing, you know, I mean, I, I think focusing on, uh, you know, masculine, feminine. I, I don't know. I think you, you. I think everybody, male or female, needs to take self responsibility, mm -hmm. and you know, it may be harder to, for whether it's biological reasons or cultural reasons, it may be harder for women to be assertive, but they, you know, it, we live in a society where they are equals legally and morally. And, it, you know, so if you're with a guy and he's doing something you don't like, you, he, he shouldn't have to ask for permission. But if you say, yeah, I don't like that. Stop. That's you being assertive. And then he, if he keeps going, then he, that's the line he has crossed. You know, you need to, a, a woman needs to, you know, be forthright so, about her. Okay. Needs. So here's what, a, here's what a man might say is he might say, well, but she doesn't mean no. Right. And that's, and sometimes that's the that's danger, true. right? But that, but that's why I think women need to be trained to be 
forthright about what they want and men need to be trained to listen and and you know respect yeah. but but you know we're not quite there yet because as you said a lot of women you know still think it's you know they oh no no stop and then we stop they're like why'd you stop yeah, exactly you know? <laughs> um, that's happened to me as a psychiatrist you know, you know, sure great. you know if you, if you want to be you know playing games then you know sometimes you're gonna you're someone's gonna go too far someone's not gonna realize the rules of the game um yeah so it, it is well, it is tricky so there's i mean i i I, I th- it is tricky. I don't know. I don't know the answers either. My my thought is that's um, in the past one of the lines was you waited till marriage, for instance. I think that's right. kind of crazy. <laughs> I think that um, if you do yeah, that, completely crazy. I yeah. even tell people who who say they're going to do that. I I have no shame. I don't think it's a good idea for anybody in the world. I just don't think it's a good no. idea. <laughs> no. Not... In fact, when I was, I had kind of unusual parenting, I guess. But, um, you know, my, my mom told me uh, very young, um, don't you ever get married without, you know, having sex. She's like, you know, you absolutely, that's an important part of a relationship. You absolutely have yeah. to know what your sexual relationship is like before you get married. You can't figure it out afterwards. It doesn't yeah. work. Uh, I, so, so I think that's a bad idea. If you're taking too big of a gamble at that point. Oh, um, yeah. And, and then there's more of a pressure to rush too. Yeah. Like I oh, think absolutely. people don't talk about that side of it, but, but that is a line, you know, or even, um, I, I, so I do think there are lines that people can set like, um, you know, I don't know if I've brought this up before, but I remember watching a podcast. It might've been on Joe Rogan and there was a comedian who was talking about, um, it was a comedian. He was the white guy who wrote for Dave Chappelle. I don't remember his name. No. Um, pretty fa- He's pretty famous, but, but anyway, he was talking about how one of his lady friends was explaining one of her sexual encounters where she had taken a guy home and she had told him, you know, and he, he wanted to do anal and she said no, but he did it anyway. Mm. And my, I mean, obvi- and th- so the question is, though, she had already agreed they were having sex and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Now, obviously, she has a right to not have that happen if she doesn't want yeah. it to. Yeah. But the the question is. You know, on the flip side is he was in the moment, you know, his, his reasoning was gone. You know, when you're in the middle of sex. Now, again, I'm not trying to make excuses for him. What I'm, all I'm trying to say, I want to finish before you say anything because I don't want to get in trouble. Okay. What, what all I wanted to say was the thing that went through my mind is, yeah, she has a right for that. But the smart thing is to get to know somebody before you bring them home. And yes. because that's a character thing. Like if you really, really say no, 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 and he still does it there are indications of their character that they would be that kind of person. Yeah. And this is why, again, not an excuse that it's okay to do this. If you do do decide to have a one night stand or whatever, but it's why you like a line to have for everyone is not to have one night stands. Like that's one right. get to yeah. know the person, be a better judge of character. Yeah. You know, and, and um, at least try to be a better judge of character. And of course, if that happens, like push them up, you know, like, stop it like that's a horrible thing that shouldn't happen if yeah. you say no to something like that yeah or anything so. yeah no but i i think uh, you know i think that we each as individuals need to you know kind of figure out our lines um yeah. and i think that that's uh, personally that's yeah that's one that i've always tried to adhere to it's you know not <laughs> not having sex with people that you don't know you know it just it doesn't seem like that's a very good policy. So yeah, I think that's a good line that people need to draw. So the, your characters and, and I, I saw one of your other movies a while back. Is there a particular type of, cause, and this isn't the first time you've had a straight man. Right. I, I remember one, there was another one. I don't know if this is common, but it seems to be at least in one that I saw like years ago where there was a, a straight man who was convinced to be, homosexual or you know or at least a gay encounter if i remember right yeah um, coffee date is the movie you're talking coffee about. Yeah. date. thank you thank yeah. you yeah yeah so that that did so i don't know if that's common i mean the other one with lance bass is like it, i didn't see it but i'm gonna have to watch it later tonight i think but it's like a yeah, mystery it's really it's a funny uh, it's, it's like, like a, a funny... screwball comedy um and yeah. it doesn't have that kind of storyline that one really I fun and i just directed um yeah it you know in my work as a as a writer i i've 
So, so, it's funny. Somebody asked me that at a Q and A recently because, uh, um, yeah, I, I have tried to explore that sort of gray area a little bit, um, and because I do think it's, uh, I think there's something there that needs to be explored. You know, like I said, I'm, I'm fascinated by this data that, you know, that some 30 to 40 percent of people have had these experiences. Men have had these experiences, and but they don't talk about them. Mm-hmm. So. I, th- I think that's that's interesting. Well, I suspect that all men have had some kind of question in their mind on some level. Like I this, think so. we have billions I, I, of thoughts in our lives. Exactly. I, mean, I know I have. Like I'm, you know, definitely, um, definitely been been a been something I thought about um, in my life for sure. So I, I can't imagine, and I, I do think I'm pretty straight. <laughs> like I, I'm. You know, maybe I, who knows? Maybe I'm more uh, fluid than I think, but I, I'm pretty confident in my my sexual uh, attractiveness, but or attractions. <laughs> but I can't imagine that there's any guy who doesn't have it, and if he or who doesn't have those thoughts at some point. And yeah, if they're if they're being honest, if they're not repressed. if they're being honest yeah. with themselves, yeah. yeah. So like they they might be so you know, machismo that they're like fuck that, and then yeah. they're like don't be this, and they they put a wall that blocks it but any like i think normal person yeah. has a semblance of health well i think what's think interesting at you know although obviously um you know men and women are different despite what some some uh recent you know people on the left are trying to make everybody you know the same and there are no biological differences there are biological differences yeah. but there are also a lot there's a lot of crossover you know um and I, you know, I consider myself, you know, pretty strongly gay, but like I was on set, um, I was directing a, a pilot once and, um, there was this, uh, young woman, uh, who was, uh, she'd been a Calvin Klein model and, you know, there's that look that like really slim and she had a, this really boyish haircut, but she was a girl. And anyway, there's a sex scene. And, and she, uh, after, you know, I yelled cut, she just stood up and she's walking around topless. And I'm just like, this girl is hot. She yeah. is really, really sexy. Um, you know, I didn't do anything. It wouldn't have been professional if, you know, and I was in a relationship, but, but, you know, yeah, she had, you know, she, there was kind of a boyish quality to her that appealed to me. Oh, as a I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You know, but she was, you know, but she had, breasts and she was a woman she was clearly a woman mm-hmm. um and then there's this whole phenomenon which you know i have to confess i i don't really understand it but it's it's clearly a thing of uh, men that are attracted to pre-op trans women um i have a, a friend actually who's who's a trans woman and she tells me you know it you know because i would have thought oh it must be very hard to find you know men that and she's like oh no it, there are there are a lot of men that are really into this i'm like okay so this, I, yeah. so wait, I need to get my head straight with this. So that is, <laughs> that is a, a straight man, yeah, who's attracted to basically another man who's not had the surgery to become a woman. Well, right, but but who presents? I mean, who, who wears the dress and and is, well, not just wears the. I mean, this is my my friend. It's someone who's you know been on female hormones, has natural oh, breasts it's... from the hormones, but has not you know, but still has the equipment. Um. Yeah. So and but you know. The, the men that want that, they, they want the trapping, they, they want the femininity, they want the softness, they, the things that, that you probably are attracted to, but somehow that plus a penis. Like I said, I don't understand it, but apparently it's a thing. Um, so anyway, my point was that I think, you know, humans are, there's so many different, both psychological traits as well as physical traits that, we each find attractive and yeah, there, if you're honest with yourself, there's going to be times when, you know, when I see a beautiful woman that there's something about her that pushes my sexual buttons that most women don't. Mm. It, it happened. I saw, when I saw the uh, Wonder Woman movie, um, Gail Gadot, I was like, yep, yeah, if I were single and she were crazy enough to want to go out with me, I would do that in a heartbeat. She's, you know, there's it's like something that. incredibly sexy about her. Did you ever watch The Office? Uh, a couple times that wasn't a regular. Um, 
Never mind. There, um, there's, it's one of my favorite shows. And there's this, this one moment when Andy is confused if he's gay. He's one of the characters. Uh-huh. And there's a, there's a gay guy, Oscar Martinez, right, on I, the yeah. show. Yeah. And, you know, he goes to him and he tells him, like, you know, I don't know if I'm gay. And he, he's, like, telling the story, like, well, let's just say Brad Pitt were, like, you know, coming on to me and he wanted to... to you know, kiss me. And, 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 you know, I would reject him a little bit at first, but if he, if he kept pushing on me, maybe I would say, and Oscar's like, so in this dream, Brad Pitt is, you're rejecting Brad Pitt and he's still wanting you. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, what's my, you know, but it was just, it was a funny episode of, you know, someone yeah. was spreading a rumor that this character was gay. Um, right. But anyway, so, so there, but there was that kind of playful thing. Cause he, he's a very effeminate character in mm-hmm. the, in the, in the story. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean that. I mean that's that's interesting to me. And I. So here's where I like the the things with homosexuality is not not my purview, of course. But I do see this. I have to say, the closeness in our society of sexuality and, and not not even experimenting like with different sexes, but just experiment or, or expanding and understanding sex is, is the way yeah. I would put it. Like. You know, I just have to say, I've been with enough women that have told me that, you know, of their sexual experiences in the past, and they, it's horrifying. Like, it's just horrifying. Like, oh, really? you, you, yeah, you do one or two positions for years. That's it. And it's like, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it's like, you know, there's women in their 30s that they were married for like several years or something, and, you know, we're, we're dating or something. And, and they just tell me, yeah, I mean, we had sex a couple times. We had a good sex life. We had sex a couple times a week. And when I dig deeper, it's like they never did anything you know, they never really wanted to learn more, or thought about learning more about sexual sex. Right. And, and, and like, yeah. well, what if you tried this? What if you tried putting food into it? What if you tried that? You know? And they're like, what? No, it's like, there's two, three positions. That, I was like, God, that sounds boring. Like, what? Yeah. and, and th- there's a, a lack of a desire or a lot, like there's a wall in our society, not just with homosexuality, but with heterosexuality. Yeah, with with of, any sort of yeah, exploration any, of sexuality. Of just, yeah. of just like, treating sex like it's a subject you can learn and master like any other subject like Mm. tennis or or basketball or something like that like you can get better at sports you can get better so it's like you know getting better at sex is not just having a couple of positions with other people it's like you know read books on on sexuality and sex like you know i don't i've told to a lot of guys in the past i've recommended this book i've even bought it for people, even though they think it's weird, I, I, I brought it for my friend's uh, 30th birthday as kind of a joke, but I was serious. And it's called, um, um, oh shit, it's called She Comes First. Ah, okay. <laughs> and, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, and, and it's about females, you know, anatomy and how it works a little bit more. And I'm like, you know, and the, the premise of the guy, I think it's Ian Kerner, Dr. Ian Kerner is a sex therapist. And the mm-hmm. premise is something that I totally agree with, which is, more guys, most guys know more about what's under the hood of their cars than under the hood of their wives. And I think that's, that's accurate, but the, pro- sad, but probably accurate, the, the yeah. problem isn't, you know, there's nothing innately wrong with men. It's a cultural stopping point where you, you, you know, you just know sex, right? And it's yeah. just something innate that we just, we know what we're doing. We don't have to ask. We don't have to go look it up. We don't have to right. do something weird like that. And I, I think that is, horrible and maybe why everyone's so miserable in our culture <laughs> maybe if more people had better sex they would be you know better people or, or better able to have conversations with each other i don't know and they're more open with themselves but anyway th- my point so. was that that's a cultural wall that we have on both sides homosexuality you know what you're t- or, or not homosexuality but what you're exploring in that gray area yeah as well as with he- heterosexuality yeah. No, I mean, to me, it's 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 kind of all the same issue. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I w- when you look at, uh, you know, the the fundamentalist belief that, you know, oh, homosexuality is unnatural. When you actually start looking at uh, nature, other primates in particular, our closest genetic relatives, um, you know, homosexuality is very it, it's part of the chimpanzee and bonobo society. And it's um you know, they're, they're not necessarily like gay chimps. They're just chimps that, you know, this is just what they do for recreation. They have sex with each other. Yeah. You know, obviously we're not 
we're not chimps and I'm not saying we should have indiscriminate sex. No, no, we're more emotionally complex, obviously. Yeah, we're much more emotionally complex. But I think, um, you know, if you take out the shame and the, all the, you know, yeah. sex is dirty, sex is negative, sex is only for making babies, um, you know, you open up a lot of territory there. And, and I think a lot of potential for connection and joy. And, um, you know, I hope that in the future, you know, younger people especially will will not be quite so hung up. Well, it's, it's hard to it's hard to know, of course, because people don't talk about it. So right. It's hard to know um, unless you get really intimate with somebody and you learn. And this is so I, I'm only talking like a very small. I could be wrong. I mean, everybody could be having amazing sex. My sense is that they're not. Yeah. Um, but, you know, in talking to women throughout my life, my, you know, the, the few really close friends or girlfriends that I had who would talk more explicitly about it, which is very rare. Like, yeah. so, so I could be very way off, but my, my t- sense has been that it hasn't been that incredible. Um, or even though they, they might think that it's incredible, it's like there's so much more you could be, you could be learning. Like, you know, yeah. buy a, a, a video that shows you different techniques and what to yeah. do and like, you know, learn more. That, I mean, that's, that's my whole thing is, you know, people learn things in every realm. Why not sex? Like, you know, they, they do, there's a whole bunch of romance things on how to be better in a romantic relationship. Right. That's good. That's smart. Like how to that's find the person good. of yeah. your dreams, how to keep them, how to, you know, the five love languages, how to understand relationships. There's all millions of things. And a lot of them in Christian section, which I find really yeah. interesting. Like if you go to oh. the Christian section, there's a, right. five love languages I think is there. Okay. I believe, you know, and there's a whole bunch of stuff on it. So they've really gotten the relationship thing on. And it's like, all right, well, how do you get your freak on, man? You gotta, you gotta have some fun too, like that. And and I say that jokingly, but the the reality is, in my view, anyway, that there's a super, you know, it's it. There's no, it's not even a super close connection. There's, it's a completely integrated connection between the romantic side of it and the emotional side of it and the physical side, which I think is yeah. implicit in your story too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Well, okay. I, yeah. I hope that uh, I hope that some straight men will not be scared of this movie because yeah. uh, I think there is something there for them and uh, yeah I, th- I I tried to make it for everyone you know I I tried to make a story that would appeal to you know to anyone with an open mind anyway yeah so I mean everyone check out say yes give it um, give it a star rating after you watch it and enjoy it and um, watch some of Stewart's other movies and what else is on the horizon for you. <laughs> Uh, well, currently I'm in the middle of the second season. I have a web series called Coffeehouse Chronicles, which is oh, okay. aimed at the LGBT community. But again, it's, you know, the stories are very accessible to everyone. That's on YouTube. And we're in the middle of the second season. So you can is there go a and trailer? watch episodes. Um, there's a trailer for the, the first season we, um, are selling, uh, and, and so there, you can go to Amazon and see the whole first season. And there's a trailer for that on Amazon. What's it called? Uh, Coffeehouse Chronicles. Maybe we'll watch one real quick. Okay. Are they short? Um, th- well, the trailer's short. The trailer, yeah, it's very. Um, but the yeah, there, there's a, there should be a trailer that's only like I don't know, minute and a half, something like that. So it's uh, Coffee House Chronicles the movie trailer. Yes, that's it. Okay, so I will. We can we can end here if you have to go. I don't want to keep you too long. Let me. Okay. What time is it? Yeah, I guess it's it's been we been about an hour well thank you so much for doing this this was a lot of fun okay so before you go though let me show this uh trailer for people so stick around everybody it's a quick trailer and then we'll we'll sign off i just want to make sure people check out thank you everybody and um yeah i hope we can do this again sometime this was a lot of fun okay so hold on one second before you go i'm playing it now okay You're a profile set graphic designer. I'm, I'm multi-talented in all kinds of ways. Could we find an attractive non-psycho for me to date, please? You want to get out of here? Neither of us are jumping into the sack tonight. You must be kind of picky. There's not even a checkbox for me on Match.com. I guess a fling will do. I'm just not into Asians. You had me fooled. We should do something special to mark the occasion. Surprise me. Well, you know couples are extra. And there's another bump if you guys want DP. 
DP. Double penetration. But I'm not really interested in eating women figuratively or literally. Me either. How was it? The date? It. How was it? He was an animal and not the good kind. Feel kind of sorry for straight guys. What? Because we're not getting our asses pounded? Sorry to interrupt a father son chat. He's not my dad. Oh, really? We were hoping you guys were out here being intimate. <clears throat> I give truly great. <laughs> so that one's definitely more f directly for the LGBT community. For sure. Yeah, definitely. That one's much more explicitly. Say yes is for more people, but that's good. So people can see a more broad spectrum because a lot of people who watch the show may not be familiar with the um, cinema of LGBT. So that is true. They, they have one, you have say yes, which I think is applicable to everybody. This is still fun for everybody, I'm sure, but it is, seems to be yeah, much more direct. It's definitely aimed at the gay community, but, yeah. uh, but it's also, it's a comedy. So uh, yeah, I saw you smiling a few times. Yeah, so there's some funny moments. And there's yeah. one, what's the, the, the Asian lady that walks up? There's, oh, she's Amy from, Hill. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I, I know she's her. She's on everything. She's great. She's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. She's um, everywhere. I don't know. I'm trying to think. But anyway, so thank you for your time. That was, uh, that was fun. I, th I hope people will um, watch your movie and, you know, follow your career and keep things moving and keep asking tough questions, man. That sounds good. All sounds right. good. All right. Take care. Thanks, Kurt. Bye-bye.